Hi, I'm Sergey, and my talk is about managing a local WordPress community. Uh, my WordPress story. Okay. My WordPress story uh, started with translating a few strings into Russian uh, in 2007. Uh, I'm managing Russian translations and support forums since then for almost nine years. A couple of years later, I started actively working on uh, WordPress Core, and now I work as a WordPress Core contributor at Yoast. I'm also participating in the Polygots team, which translates WordPress into more than 100 languages, and the support team, uh, which runs the forums and tries to make sure the users who need some help can get it, and the meta team, which runs the infrastructure behind WordPress work. So, uh, what does a local community mean? It can mean an online community with the Rosetta blog, uh, forums, uh, documentation in your language, and translation. And it can also mean an offline community in your city, uh, meetups, and if there's a large community, also word camps. I'm going to talk about both online and offline community. So, what uh, the Rosetta blog is. It's a central hub for your locale, and the place users go to download WordPress in their language. It has a news section, uh, the theme uh, directory translated into your language, the plugins in your language, and the support forums, where users go for help and communicate with each other and answer each other's questions. Uh, it also has uh, documentation part is a codex. It's a lot of collection of wiki pages with function reference and examples. So an important task for local communities to provide translations for WordPress core plugins and teams. I think it's it maybe the most important task. Uh, when a new WordPress version is released, uh, Apollo God's team keeps an eye on the local stats. I hear how, uh, here's how it looks. Uh, and makes sure that there are no issues and uh, the locales that need some help can get it. Uh, we want to make sure that WordPress in, is translated into as many languages as possible. So how do we keep translating efficiently? If you like, it depends on what you would like to do. If you'd like to stay in touch with the core team and report any issues you've noticed with the strings, and then I'd suggest translating WordPress trunk. It's a version currently in development. Uh, if you'd like to provide better versions and release candidates in your language for your users, you can do that as well. The upside of this approach is that you don't have to translate hundreds of strings at once on the release week. And the downside is that it takes about an hour per week. And most importantly, uh, the strings can change later. So if you don't like to, to make too much edits, that's absolutely fine. And then I'd suggest waiting for a string freeze. It's generally announced a couple of weeks before the release. In the past, when you wanted to translate a plugin or theme, you needed to get a pod file, which is a translation template, install a software like PoEdit, create PO and ML files, and email them to the plugin author. Well, the good news is that now you, don't, you no longer have to do that. You can translate almost any plugin directly on translate WordPress.org site, which is powered by the software called WordPress. I say almost any plugin because some plugins might not be properly prepared for localization. In that case, you should report the issue to the plugin after. So it sounds like it's now easy to translate plugins and teams, and everything's great. Well, it's not that simple because if you have several thousand plugins and teams to translate, you cannot and should not do it alone. On the translate WordPress org site, there are three different roles. 
uh, the general translation editor of GTE who oversees translations for the whole locale, and the project translation editor of PTE who translates a particular project like a plugin or theme or WordPress core, and translator who occasionally contributes a few strings. So in order for the translation system to work efficiently, you should have as many PTEs as possible, and you also have to make sure uh, they have read and understood the style guidelines for language. So how do you get more PTEs? When someone has translated a plugin, the plugin author posts a request on a Polyglot's blog uh, to assign that person as a PTE for their plugin. You should monitor those requests, check the strings, and if everything is OK, add that translator as a PTE. If there's an issue, let them know what it is and how to fix it. You don't have to monitor the Polyglot's blog manually. You can set up a notification for the local code in your WordPress.org profile. You should trans create a translation guide to refer new PTEs to and document your team's best practices to make sure everyone is on the same side. Currently, there's no way in WordPress to reject a string with some feedback, so you'd like to, if you'd like to explain the reason for the rejection, you have to find a way to contact the translator. Another important part of a local community is support forums. I like the forums very much because answering questions from other users is a great way to learn. And most of my WordPress experience comes from tinkering with code for someone's request on the forums. However, once you start answering questions, you begin to represent WordPress itself to the user, and you should take that into account. Users don't come to the forums just for fun. Uh, they become frustrated with a particular problem and need a solution. So don't be condescending, be helpful. Like with plugin and theme translations, you cannot and should not run uh, the support forums alone. So when someone shows up and starts consistently giving helpful replies for a certain amount of time, consider making them a moderator or administrator. There will be a lot of similar questions from different users, so it might be a good idea to create an FAQ page and make sure, they, make sure you have a forum rules or forum welcome page as well. It's also a good idea to read the support handbook available on makewordpress.org slash support. It has some general expectations and advice for support contributors. You should empty the spam queue regularly because otherwise some replies can easily be lost, especially if they have links in them, which would be frustrating. No need to do it manually. There are browser extensions you can set up for that like Visual Pink for Chrome or Distill Web Monitor for Firefox. If you're on WordPress Slack, you can participate in support team meetings on, third, on Thursdays and say hi to other members of the international support team. You might also want to create your own Slack team to discuss things specific to your locale in your language. So when you think about WordPress documentation, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is Codex. It's a collection of wiki pages with function references and examples. The upside is that anyone can edit, expand, or translate it, and the downside is that it might be hard to find some information because there's no clear distinction between user reference and developer reference. It's kind of a mix of both. That's why Codex is no longer actively developed or supported. In the future, it will be replaced with a user reference called name Help Hub, which is currently under development, and code reference, which is already live on developer WordPress org. There are also some handbooks for plugin and team developers and for some contributor teams. Um, at the moment, uh, all of them are in English, but perhaps in the future, some of them will be translated into other languages. So let's talk about the offline community. I recently started the WordPress meetup in my home city, and 
I would like to share my experience. WordPress Meetup is a group of two or more people getting together on a regular basis and discussing WordPress-related topics. There can be any number of attendees, and any, the event can have any format. So what should you do? Uh, there's a good chance uh, you, you already have a WordPress Meetup in a city which you can join, but what if not? What if, well, if there's no WordPress Meetup in your city, then you should start one. If you haven't seen Tacos talk this year at WordCamp Torino, it's called your local uh, WordPress Meetup is only a few steps away. It's on WordPress.tv and it's very inspiring. I highly recommend it. So how do you start a WordPress Meetup? There's three simple steps. You find the venue, invite some friends, and have a fantastic Meetup. That's it. It's that simple. And it might be a good idea to check out existing resources in your city. Maybe there's, there's already a developer group that would be interested in WordPress. Uh, maybe a PHP group or some general uh, interested people. When planning the meetups, you should uh, pick a regular day of the month, but also make sure it doesn't clash with other IT-related events. Uh, create a Slack channel to discuss potential ideas uh, and create a website or a Facebook group or whatever to post photos and news. You can choose any format of the, for the event you like. You can hang out in a coffee shop or have something more official, whatever works for you. It helps to have an agenda and prepare it in advance. For example, you can, you can invite the speaker. You can let everyone discuss their recent WordPress projects. You can have a contributing evening. Uh, again, whatever works best for you. So if you've been thinking about starting a WordPress meetup but haven't yet, just do it. Okay, if I have a short talk and to summarize it, uh, I think WordPress is a unique project and what makes it great is the community where everyone is welcome. It's the most open and friendly community I've ever seen. Without all of us, it's just software. So, okay, that's all for me.